you have issues with your gut, don't just think, hey, this is just a gut issue. Therefore, my only symptoms are dyspepsia, bloating, gas, nausea, constipation, depression, diarrhea. You could have fatigue. You could have cognitive issues. You could have mood issues, depression, anxiety, sleep, right? So we have to get kind of outside of the We have to go into the extra intestinal world, meaning symptoms outside of just your gut related symptoms. And so it's possible if you have H. pylori, you may only have fatigue and mood issues and sleep. And it's very possible. So you don't want to just get hung up on the digestive symptoms thinking I'm okay. You could have things outside of the gut area. Yeah. And you don't even recognize it in the psychiatrist is certainly not going to suggest that your anxiety and depression is an H. pylori infection. And that was it for me. I mean, I had panic attacks, I had anxiety. I mean, I was a wreck when I had gut infections. I will tell you personally and clinically, I've seen the link between mood issues and gut issues. And I had a lady that I had maybe the last two months, I did not give her any antidepressant herbs at all. All we did is work on her gut. And within six weeks, she said her depression was 90% better. And she just said it kind of nonchalantly. And I'm like, you said you were depressed for 20 years during our initial call. Are you not realizing what we've done in six weeks just by working on your gut? We've, as you self-reported, a 90% reduction in depression, which you've had for 20 years. That is insane. That should be on the billboard. That should be on the headline news. But I think there's just some ignorance about the link between gut and mood issues. So hopefully the psychiatric world and the gastroenterology world can start to get more integrated because right now they're still very, very separate, which is no good for the population. Yeah. Here's an article in the the journal of gastroenterology research and practice. It's called the role of H pylori in regulating hormones and functional dyspepsia. So if you get right to it, it says H pylori strains have been shown to affect the secretion of several hormones, including five, five hyphen HT or five HTP. That's the serotonin melatonin precursor ghrelin, which affects uh, um, appetite, dopamine, gastrin, which affects HCL levels. Um, so, and then it has, um, it might be the cause of psychological disorders of functional dyspepsia. And so essentially there's a strong connection with H pylori hormones and a lot of the neurotransmitters an appetite regulating compound. So really important, right? H. pylori, we have to go above and beyond just thinking this is a digestive issue. It can affect mood, energy, sleep, and of course, hormones as well. You and I talk about this kind of like we're just like tying our shoes and cooking some breakfast. What'd you have for breakfast today? Oh, I had some pastured eggs and bacon, some sausage. What about you? Oh yeah, handful of some avocado and pecans. Like we talk about it like it's just so nonchalant. But I mean, if this were to be the headline news, like you and I, this podcast we just did, if this were to be like, the trending thing of the week and 300 million people heard this. I mean, we could put a huge dent in the world. I think we're doing a great job. We've got good numbers, but my God, if this was like the trending interview of the week, I mean, just imagine people would have so much more hope for their mental health, their physical health, their heartburn. This is empowering stuff here. Yep. And don't expect your conventional medical doctor to know about this stuff unless they've gone through more integrative kind of nutritional, natural, functional type of continuing education. 